Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the Pokemon Sword and Shield trailer and do a little bit of analysis work and see if we can pinpoint anything that might be of interest. Alright, so starting off here off the bat, we can see that this is probably going to be the starting town here, um, given by the fact that we have a Route 1. And uh, also on the Galar region map, we have this section down here at the bottom that is uh, kind of got these vast rolling hills and meadows of... Uh, of grain and wheat and uh, this kind of rustic aged uh, aged kind of village look to it um, as we go on we see here we got the fletchling uh, weather vane which uh, further signifies uh, the multi-generational aspect of this game and that we're going to have many different pokemon here we can see a gym uh, which thank god that they're bringing gems back and we're not having to deal with trials anymore Thank you, Nintendo. Um, this is more than likely going to be a grass gem, although this could be a feather and it could be a flying type, but this obviously looks more like a leaf than anything else. Um, and a Pokemon Center here, as well as these uh, patches of grass or, uh, or wheat. And uh, I think this is uh, more than likely, uh, this seems like an area where you could encounter wild Pokemon. And I think the fact that they've kind of integrated that in with the towns um, is really cool and that you could, you know, get your Pokemon here and run immediately to the Pokemon Center. And uh, it not take very long at all. Here we see this little section over here, which looks possibly like something maybe with a bike uh, that you can jump over, or maybe it's just another addition to the path. And on this rock down here, there's this weird kind of symbol, and uh, that's going to be an ongoing theme uh, in this trailer. There's going to be a lot of carvings and uh, symbolism that are carved into the countryside and on rocks and just kind of sporadically in here uh, spaced out. Here we have the uh, the home for our characters. There's a lot of wheelbarrows in this region. Um, the characters and the trainers in this one seem, they look older to me. Um, Design-wise, I think they look okay. I'm not really uh, too picky on that. And uh, customization has been a big part of uh, the Pokemon games here in recent years. So I don't think that that's going to be... Um, the character designs look fine. No issue there. So back in this frame here, it goes by very quick. This area like right here looks like a small battle arena, maybe a sparring area. This could be the trainer school. Um, it kind of has that look about it. Um, so who knows, this might be an area where we learn how to battle Pokemon for all those new trainers who are uh, unfamiliar and uh, have never played the series before. And also this bench here that we may be able to sit on and to take in the nice beautiful view because this game looks fucking gorgeous. Nice spooky forest. And over here, uh, you can kind of see in this frame if I can get it just right. So this game is uh, in the Galar region is uh, based heavily off of England. Uh, that it hasn't been confirmed to my knowledge, but the general assumption um, just given by the imagery, the names of the games, and just the shape of the region is that this is going to be based off of England. Um, and this here is a telltale sign of that because this looks very sim similar to Big Ben. Um, and we can tell that this is a gem because the gem symbol being right here um, Which is also kind of a, a new take on it, but yeah, this is a, this is gonna be a new gem Here we have a better shot and a better look at the symbol kind of looks like a Sharingan almost uh, From the gem symbol here back at this leaf gem back in that first town and uh, back here in the background and you've seen a couple other shots and you can kind of see on the Galar region map as well Trains and locomotion is going to be a big part of this game. There's a lot of train tracks uh, sporadically throughout the region and, uh, and a lot of the shots in these trailers. So that's going to probably be a big, uh, large portion of how you travel in the game uh, will be through trains. Did I say train? I meant travel. Whatever. You guys know what I mean. Here's another shot of that lake and wild encounters are back. Here we have a Pikachu. And uh, the Chinchilla Pokemon, whose name I cannot remember, I think you are from Gen 5, if memory serves correctly, um, doing some battling. And uh, the fact that this is multi-generational is so exciting to me. I really love the fact that we're going to have... Uh, and who knows if the, if the, all these Pokemon are going to be able to be captured uh, from in, uh, in, in this one region, or maybe if it's uh, just some, some trading or something like that. But the fact that it has the capability to be multiple, multi generational is very exciting to me here we have what looks like the online battling stadium 
which has been revamped and looks absolutely great. And you got the stadium full of uh, Pokemon fans, obviously, and all this fun stuff. Doesn't look to be a gym to me, uh, mainly because that giant uh, the, or the new gym symbol isn't anywhere to be seen here. And uh, yeah, it just uh, it screams uh, screams online battling to me. Here is more than likely the trainer's home, and because there's a companion Pokemon here, typically. That is, uh, typically, most Pokemon games will have kind of like this little companion Pokemon, or the recent ones have anyways, uh, in your own home that keep your mom or your parent company. We have in the snowy village, these more train tracks and stuff. Back uh, in this shot here, we have a nice big shot of uh, of this, uh, this carving. Uh, this could be some type of legendary Pokemon or a hint towards it. Um, it looks like people are down here and like maybe some kind of wolf or a dog which could go into the symbols with the logos um, Who knows all kind of speculation, but obviously this is a big point. They wouldn't have showed this uh, and uh, it, They wouldn't have made a part of it in this trailer if it wasn't something that uh, should be focused on We got this nice panorama shot showing some different areas and uh, a trainer uh, who's possibly part of a gym going into this and yeah Next up, we should have our uh, our, uh, our starter Pokemon and more confirmation of uh, this being England with the power of steam. Here we have the very cute Score Bunny coming down, um, who I... <sighs> Nintendo, please don't make this firefighting. A large part of me uh, thinks that this is going to be a fire fairy or a fire normal type Pokemon. I don't really have any kind of... Uh, any proof to kind of back that up. This is just my wild speculation going off here. Um, but we all know it's going to be firefighting, am I right? Oh, Lord. Nintendo, why do you keep doing it? I don't understand. You have you have, you have, have 18 typings. Mix it up. Um, here we have Sobble. Sobble is uh, so cute. I love this Pokemon so much. I My speculation for this is that it's going to be a water ghost type because of this weird, this weird kind of cloaking thing that it has going on. That could just be a, an ability. Uh, but he's he's almost translucent. He looks kind of he looks kind of see-through almost. And uh, I, I, again, no basis to to really you know claim that on. But uh, just my speculation is that this could be a water ghost type. And here we have Grookey, the Pokemon that I would likely be choosing because I typically choose a grass Pokemon. Um, obviously, him being a monkey, this is <laughs> he's going to be a grass fighting type. I don't know the exact number. I could probably count it, but Nintendo does not have a good track record when it comes to monkey Pokemon either. They are, the vast majority of the time, they are going to be fighting types. You look at Mankey, Primeape, um, Slackoth, um, Vigoroth, uh, the list goes on. You know, there's, they have, <laughs> Nintendo, Nintendo has a track record, guys, when it comes to Pokemon games. They don't change a lot of things with them. History has shown that. And here we have the logo for Pokemon Sword and the logo for Pokemon Shield with these uh, these puppers, these wolf uh, wolf figures here. Who knows if this has any kind of symbolism tied into the legendaries. I think it'd be cool to have um, these, uh, to, to have some wolf legendaries. Um, it'd be very neat. I like wolves, I like dogs, so I mean, it'd be cool to me. But yeah, who knows? Could just be the symbol, could have nothing to do with it. Only time will tell. But here we see it's releasing in late 2019, more than likely November, because the last few Pokemon games have all released in November. And uh, yeah, Nintendo likes to be consistent, if not anything else. So yeah, guys, that's going to do it for the analysis. Let me know what you think and what you saw that I may have not have seen in this. And if there's anything interesting that you would also like to point out about Pokemon Sword and Shield. If you guys would like to see more videos about Pokemon Sword and Shield, please let me know. I would love to do more and cover more on these games because I'm very excited for them. This is the most excited I've been for a Pokemon game probably since X and Y came out, which was over five years ago. So it's really cool to be excited about Pokemon again. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Follow me on all my socials. Links are down in the description. You know what all that stuff is. Thank you guys so much. I will see all of you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.